This aerial photograph of Long Reef in New South Wales was taken by Frank Hurley in about 1960, less than 60 years ago. Looking at the tip of Long Reef, you can see a sand dune heaped against the north facing cliff. This dune once surmounted the cliff, covering it entirely. In the distance, you can see discrete banksia trees, the dark blobs, amongst coastal wattle, lamandra and themata grassland. Bitu bush does not appear to be present in this photograph. You can also see that the major portion of the dune is not vegetated at all in 1960. Bitu bush, a native of South Africa, was first recorded in Australia in 1908 in coastal vegetation near Newcastle, New South Wales. It probably arrived in ship's ballast water. Since then, it's had a chequered history. It was promoted by the New South Wales Soil Conservation Board, which recognised its rapid growth and ability to stabilise soils. Deliberate planting of bitu bush thus occurred along the New South Wales coastline for several decades, wherever the coastal dunes had been destabilised by strip mining for rutile and titanium. One company alone dredges 26 million tonnes of sand a year. 90% of the world's rutile comes from the beaches of Australia, most of it's used to produce titanium dioxide, the whitener in paints, paper and textiles. Finally, the beaches are carefully replanted and restored to their original condition. When this biological disaster was finally acknowledged, Bitu was declared a noxious weed, a key threat to biodiversity and a weed of national significance. In 1998, volunteer group Reef Care started rehabilitating one hectare of Bitu infected Themata grassland at Long Reef. That was around the corner at Fisherman's Beach. By then, something like 80% of the northern slope of the headland and its dune was covered with Bitu bush. Reef Care started with a $64,000 grant from the Commonwealth. Since then, there's been another $15,000 of grant funding at least, and further operational expenditure of $200,000. 4,000 volunteer hours have also been contributed at a value of a further $120,000. Thus, the cost of treating Long Reef's bitu bush infection so far totals at least $400,000 in round figures, and the job is far from finished. Bitu bush is the bright green foliage you can see in these shots. The brown area in the higher, more recent shot shows just how much bitu was removed between January 2016 and September 2018, a period getting on for three years. Moreover, what bitu remains is difficult to treat. It's on steep and unstable slopes and on cliff faces. Obviously, treatment costs per square metre will be much higher going forward, at least double. It's looking like Long Reef's relatively small outbreak of bitter bush could be a million dollar job. And as long as bitter remains, it keeps seeding and spreading, despite the introduction of biological controls such as tip moth larvae and bitter fly. They slow it up, but they certainly haven't halted it. And you can see just how much remains and how difficult it will be to get at it. The war on weeds is going to have to either get a lot more money thrown at it or it has to get smarter. Hence today's herbicide spraying demonstration by a Yamaha helicopter drone. The helicopter uh, can carry up to 32 litres, 40 kilos, fly for 100 minutes. The spray swath in the normal down spray is four metres wide. And being a helicopter uh, with the downwash, you get a, a very perfect funnel of airflow. So that creates almost no overspill, which for us is perfect when we're flying precision agriculture. Typically with precision agriculture, we'll fly about three meters above all crops. When we run with the lance, the lance is actually just outside of the rotor wash. So it's not then getting forced down. Um, and we usually spray around about five meters off the tip of the lance. And the way the lance works is it's actually articulated on the end. So the pilot will bring the aircraft up to the, the vertical surface. Uh, and then another operator looking at a monitor will actually, with a laser distance detection device that we have on the aircraft, can guide the pilot not to run into the cliff. Um, and then once they've found position, we can articulate the lance around and then move the aircraft forward and then move the lance around again. So we can vary the nozzle on the end as well from a, from a jet to a spray. What we're hoping to do with Dean and Yamaha is not so much here at Long Reef but further up the coast we've got bad problems with bone seed 
um, on a lot of our cliff edges and we can access it from down the bottom thankfully in some areas and so that's where we're going to potentially be using it because we can't get in without sailing ropes we can't do traditional bush rigging methods so um, we, we, we're potentially going to give this a go um, next year next autumn it's the plan this machine is a 390 cc water cooled four stroke engine um, and as I said before can lift 40 kilos so she's quite a machine yeah. Can you do pellets out of that as well? We can. So we have a, a spreader, we have a sprayer, and the incendiary machine also can actually release biodegradable capsules, so you can have 1080 in those as well. So we're going to be using the centre sprayer on the aircraft this morning and demonstrating cutting windrows into the uh, bitter bush up the top there. Uh, at the top of the hill you can see my colleague Mark, he's going to be my navigator today. So he'll be um, guiding me through communications, uh, giving me some information on the height of the aircraft, the speed as it gets further away from me and where I need to stop. So we'll start uh, at the top of the hill and work our way down. What we will typically do, um, oh, depending on the application, be able to hear you with your um, we'll pre-fly with a, a smaller drone, capture all the data or we may scan the area and then we can add that to our flight program and then actually fly the aircraft according to what we've collected. So in other words, we can do spot spraying, precision spraying, because naturally, being a small aircraft to a manned aircraft, uh, we've got a limitation of what we can carry. But how, however, the one good thing is that this aircraft can fly at what we call boom spray rates, rather than manned aerial rates, which means higher concentration, but less water being put out, um, better, better concentration on the, on the weeds yeah, themselves, right, yeah, and, um, and as I said before, virtually no overspill. The cost of hiring the Yamaha is between $3,500 and $5,000 per day, depending on the nature of the job to be done. That gives about four hours flying time. Broad spraying uses more herbicide and this necessitates extra trips back to base for a refill. Spot spraying a bit of bush using the lance uses less herbicide and this should result in a longer flying time than for broad spraying.